We are back on D-Light channel this week. Thanks for making the appointment once again. And what are we to do? Simple. We are to continue our conversation on change and change management. Um, we started by identifying the things that you need to be aware of on the change management journey. The first thing we identified was that there are three phases. Can you tell me? Yes, the unfreeze, the change, and the refreeze phase. And then we said we will go through a quick check on seven steps that happens in the change management journey. Thereafter, try to arrange them under the three different phases and then tell you the things you need to know and that you could possibly do to ensure that each phase turns out the way you want it to turn out and then help you to the next level where we talk about the people and all the other things that will follow. And last week, we took the first activity, which was, do you remember? Yes, identify precisely what needs to change. I invite you, I encourage you to please go back and watch that particular video if you have not watched it because it is the first step. If you miss that step, you may be climbing up the wrong tree, you may be traveling down the wrong road. Now, having identified what exactly needs to change, what then needs to follow? You need to do a proper evaluation and thereafter build a case for the change. Why is that necessary? That is necessary because you may just be looking at the tip of the iceberg. You may be shocked as to how big and wide and heavy the consequence and the things that need to be done about that thing that's about to change. You may be shocked as to how wide it is. So what are we saying here? If you have been able to say, okay, this exactly is what needs to change. Then you need to sit down, evaluate it, identify the consequence of change, the consequence of not changing. If the change is still decided to go ahead, what will it take in terms of people, in terms of process, in terms of technology? You need to mix it. And based on that, you need to come up with a clear case for why that change needs to happen. This step is very significant before because it affects the third step, which is communicate, and I'll come to that in a minute, and therefore affects everything else. If the business case is not tight, if the business case is subs suspicious, if the justification for that change is suspicious, the selling it becomes multiple hard, the communicating it becomes multiple hard, and once you miss the communication and selling step, the execution becomes almost impossible. Therefore, even for you as the entrepreneur, you do not need to just go through change because everybody's doing it. You need to know whether there is a need for you to make that change or not. Take an example where your product is probably not a consumer-based product. Maybe you sell business to business or you sell business to government and you deal with these very wholesale kind of transactions. The way you will use social media to complement your communication channel will be completely different from if you are a business that is involved in, in the FMCG sector. Now, because everybody is catching on, setting up, uh, WhatsApp channel, doing this, doing that, does not mean you should rush into it. You need to step back, evaluate, and find out whether this is really relevant for your business, whether the customers you are trying to reach are here, and whether this is really the optimal way to reach them. Therefore, it is not just enough to be aware that all oh, things are changing around and just jump on it. You need to do a proper evaluation See if you can justify, build a clear case for it, and then you are on your way to dealing with item number three, which now is communicate, communicate, communicate. Sincerely, I can't say this enough. Communication 
is at the heart of effective and efficient change management. Primarily because you only talk about change management because of the people element. If what you need to do, do is to pull out one equipment and pull in another, I remember when I was working with MTN and we had to do a, a swap of certain equipment for a different type from a different manufacturer. Those equipment will not scream. Those equipment will not cry. They really don't bother which one you, are, you, you use. But once it happens to involve human beings, which almost always is the case, the conversation is completely different. And this is where communication is so critical. You need to be deliberate about what you say, how you say, when you say, who you say it to, and then how you are dealing with the feedback from this conversation. When it comes to change, you have to be honest, you have to be transparent. Why? Because if you are not, you alone cannot hide or hoard the relevant information. It will come out. Everybody will know because you alone do not control all the variables. And if you are not upfront with communication, once it looks like you are trying to hide something, the fear factor sets in, the panic factor sets in, the suspicion factor sets in, and people begin to worry, what else are you not saying? So as an entrepreneur, if something needs to change, you need to start a new shift. You need to bring in certain technology. You need to discontinue certain line of product. When you have built the case for it, you have to aggressively communicate to all your relevant stakeholders. They could be your financiers, they could be your employees, they could be your board, they could be the regulator, they could be the union. You are better off communicating. Now, don't be confused about the initial reaction and we'll get to that in a bit. Be aware that everybody goes through a loss cycle. Again, I will deal with that down the line. But you are better off confronting it with open communication rather than trying to be selective and not being upfront because a heightened suspicion and then people become apprehensive and go into the panic mode. So you communicate, you communicate, you communicate. But when you are communicating, you need to be aware that in that audience that you are speaking to, there are four different types of people, people in inverted commas now. You have the active resistor, you have the passive resistor, you have the rank and file, and you have the change agent. These four different types of people, they hear your message differently, they will respond to them differently, and you too need to respond to them differently. Now, how do you wade through all these variables I'm throwing up in the sky? As you can see, I got to go now for this week. Why? Because I do not want any of these videos to be too long. So, it then means that you need to make it a date with me next week as I try to unpack what I just said about communication and then take it further. Remember, we are talking about seven steps. This is just step number three. So, you sure do not want to miss any of the series that will follow. And remember to share this. Tell your friends. Let them know about it. Send this to groups, blogs that you know need to benefit from this. And if there are feedback for us, don't hesitate to send. We also like to read from you from any of our channels that are out there. Those feedback and comments keep us going and we really appreciate them. So, like I promised on every video I'm going to do now between now and end of the year, I will ask these three questions now. And I want to ask again this way. Have you evaluated 2018? Have you identified your gaps? And have you started making plans for what you would like to do differently for 2019? It's not too early to start. And if there's any way we can help you, feel free to reach out. I'll be glad to do that. So, until I come your way next week as I drop the anchor this week, don't ever forget that TMAC is still my name, it hasn't changed, and that all we are trying to do in Delay is what? Make it into different. So, I'll see you next week. Bye!